Stacy, so later I'll take off all my clothes and wear it myself in the table covering. Mike, this is Jake. He plays this thing here. What is that, Jake? Jake's not on a mic. So Some yeah, wooden yeah. strings. What do you call that? I don't know. A guitar? Okay. What kind of guitar? That string. This is Mike's guitar. It's actually my guitar. It's just a Mitchell guitar. There's nothing super special. Oh, uh, it's not a Martin. Jake has a Martin, but oh, it's, it's a six thousand dollar Martin. Ah. Uh, it doesn't leave the house, so I had to bring this one. I like Stacy being my. What is this here? These people is Mike. <laughs> what did you do to me here? They don't want to use a mic. I don't know. If they start yodeling, I've had it. Not again. <laughs> Now I do I do uh, private tours at Barton, so um, I have to. I used to work at Barton. Promo. Oh, you know Chris Rinaldi. Chris Rinaldi. She's the um, international sales rep. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure of her. Okay. I worked at Final Polish. She she's my one of my good friends. When she gets to go to the NAM conference, I get to stay here and house sit for. Her. Very nice. <laughs> All right, and who's missing from the band tonight? The guy who's always behind my rear end. Tim Nagel, the drummer. Uh, he couldn't stand to look at it for another couple hours, so he took off the night. <laughs> and then Lance, our guitar player, who's usually over here to my right. He has more hair than Mike he does. does. <laughs> A lot more. It's gray, though. It's gray. It's gray. Yeah, I play bass in the band, actually, not drums. I was going to say, if Tim is the drummer, yes, yes then what do you Yeah, play? I play bass in the band, but I play this with Stacey on the acoustic stuff. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to three songs before we start with the interview. So, um, rock on acoustic style. <laughs> we'd like to give a big shout out to Kiffel. Nice to see you tonight, man. Sexy thing. Okay, gotcha. Didn't get the memo. Our setlist is irrelevant. Thank you. 
we are one more, then I guess we're going to be asked some questions. What do I like about you, Jake? Valley at the Jetport. Yep. Yes. Yeah, that was two years ago. With us? Yes. Yep, that was two years ago. I think I sang uh, Jai Cash. Yes, yes, it was. Wow, look at that. Wow. Mark, Mark Plantier was our lead guitar player, so let's give a shout out for Mark Plantier. He said he might listen tonight while he's drinking his Miller Lights. He drinks and tequila and he talks dirty in Spanish anyway. Yes. Um. All right, so <laughs> Brian Becklin, also Brian Becklin was here. He was awesome. He did a great job last season. Yep. Great time working with us too. So yeah, I, I just a, a very special thank you. You were here at the beginning when we first started. Thank you. And uh, I just ate the end. So. No, this ate the end. No, no, no way. We, we're talking along uh, just a little under work time. Um, this has been uh, it's, it's been a wild two years. Yeah, the band's know. been together for about three and a half years. So yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I remember when we were trying to get uh, samples of music off you guys, especially you get with some live stuff from Oka Molten, and that didn't work out real no, well. No, it was crazy. So my question is, and I'm going to turn this back to Nancy in a heartbeat, but do you have some CDs and, or music that is in MP3 form yet? We do, but um, if you go on our website, it just has some videos from when we were at the Sands Event Center. We are working on some new videos now. But the best way to hear us is to, you know what, get your booty out and come to see our band. 
Because there's nothing like well, live well, music. That's cool. That's, uh, that's an excellent suggestion. Well, you I'm need to get see the whole package. The that's sweats, right. the jack the drinking. Drummer. The drummer, he's usually right here. This is Tim's spot. Here he is. <laughs> Right behind glass, my butt. He's a glass of water. If you tell him to chill, huh? Um, <laughs> oh, no. No, I'm trying to get stuff out of you to put on the radio. Well, we don't have any originals. We just sing everybody else's it's stuff. Fine. I no, got a bunch of that stuff. Fine. But okay, fine. whatever works out. Well, um, I'm going to let you do your interview here. He's just going to find yeah. out where you're playing. Back to next After Hours with Nancy Jennings. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Please do What's just that t-shirt say again, Steve? Just, just say it. Just Shut say up, it. Steve. Right. So another reason why Trick Stacy is on the show uh, with me tonight is we're going to um, help promote Ashley's event that's coming up this Saturday. So Ashley, I'll hand you the mic and you can tell everybody about your event. Is Ashley on the television or whatever that thing is there? The she doesn't need widescreen. That only needs to be a live stream. Oh, live stream. Oh, live stream. Yeah. I just assumed you said widescreen. Okay, well, we're the widescreen up here. Jake is in, but Mike and I won't be here. Okay, so anybody around here that actually isn't aware of this event, which I find very hard to believe, it is going to be this Saturday, March 25th, live music starting at 7. This band right here is going to be headlining the event because they rock. And we're also going to have Five Ton Jack, which was already on the show, another lousy cover band, which was already on the show, and Grayson, which I think we're rescheduled. Uh, yeah, we have to reschedule. Yeah, it was snowing, and of course, yeah, Mother Nature gets us. Out, so, <laughs> it's going to be a really fun time. Everybody's going to dress in 80s, $8 in advance tickets. I still have them. They're still sold online, and 13 at the door. Catch up so everybody head out on Saturday night. All right, so interview time for Trick Stacy. Um, if I miss anything, Ashley, you can jump right in. <laughs> all right, first of all, how did you come up she with the name of Trick Stacy? All right, Ashley knows, say. I'm Pennsylvania Dutch, so say. Our original bass player, Rich Kemmerer, and all the band was trying to think of a name. And Mark usually thought, well, hey, let's keep the original name of the band, which is Project 13. And I thought, well, that sounds kind of alien-ish. So let's try to pick something else. And because I wear a fedora usually, or a hat, and a bandana, because I sweat like profusely, as you all know, if you've ever seen my band and you touch me, um, I figured, well, wearing a hat would be a good thing. So I wear this fedora, and Rich is like, it's like Dick Tracy, but you're Trick, trick Stacy. So it kind of like ah, So that's how it cool. emanated. And we like to have fun. We are a party band. We like to get people to drink a whole lot of soda. <laughs> And shots of, oh. shots of water. <laughs> I, I remember the I Like Candy song because you come out with the candy. Yes, yes. Our <laughs> band loves playing that song, too, especially Lance. Lance and Tim, they love that song. So What's the song? Much. It's called I Want Candy. I Want Candy. <laughs> Say, Mike, do you know the girls like that song? Yeah. No, they don't. They don't. Anyway, so that's how the name kind of came about. Now, you were just telling Steve... You've been together as Trick Stacy for three years? Um, yes, um, in three and a half years. We started in, I guess, my goodness, it'll be four years in August. So I guess that's 20, I don't know, I'm not good at math. So four years minus 2017. She's an art teacher. teacher. I teach art. Don't what, tell me. What's, any, what's your question? I know anything about math, and I'm not going to tell you what school district I work in so I don't get fired. We're not knowing how to subtract that, but yeah, 2013, I guess, was the origination of the band. Right, four years. Yeah, it'll be four years. Yeah, that's summer. how old my truck is, that's how I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've been around for almost, it'll be three and a half years. Um, Jake just joined us in August, was your first show at the Sager Bund. Yep, and Mike. Oh, about the same time, yeah. Same time. Two weeks before the um, April Park box. Yeah, and it's been a really awesome experience to work with a lot of fabulous musicians. I want to definitely make a shout out again to Mark Plantier. Reason I'm doing this, reason I'm in this band is because of him. Um, and also Rich Kammerer. Um, Jose Matos, my boyfriend, uh, was the first drummer in Trick Stacy for a couple months. And then um, he joined another band called Social Call, so he was kind of busy. So Tim Nagel jumped on board, who's phenomenal. He's our drummer now. Um, Lance Miller is an amazing addition to the band also. 
um, guitar and also lead vocals. And um, we have a great, great mix of people. We're very excited to play all over the valley. We just played uh, up at the Pig Pen first night that they opened up. We were very honored to be the first band to play there with Emily's Toy Box. Last week we were at the Gin Mill for St. Patrick's Day. The place was packed. We had a good time, a lot of yeah. people. Um, so we want to thank the Lehigh Valley for promoting live music. And thank you guys for having us here tonight. It's a difficult thing. There's an amazing amount of wonderful musicians in the valley, and it's wonderful to work with people like we do. Um, so we want to thank Lily Have Valley for having such a great amount of talent, and it's great to go see a lot of bands out there when we can. We're not working, um, and when I am not working, sometimes we just like to stay home and watch Netflix. Yeah, well, you're a busy lady between <laughs> teaching full time and then doing the uh, gigs all the time. Yeah, and drinking a lot of IPAs, you know, it takes a lot of extra time. <laughs> but I want to put a shout out to my friend Mary Ann Croon. Let me straighten this out. This is a shirt that she gave me for my birthday. I just turned 21. <laughs> Wait, let me hoist him up a little bit. That wasn't funny. Why are you laughing, people? Jeez. I, can I say that? No, I'm sorry. But anyway. And I'm still Mary older than she is at 39. No. I just have to say 21 because I know people will never believe that. But anyway. Thank you, Jake. Isn't this great? ACDC, my favorite thing ever. <laughs> Jake just turned 43. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anything else? Yes, I want to know um, individually, just give a little bit of a bio of why you started in music, when you started in music, how you started in music, and if you forget any of that, I will help you remember. So who do we want to start with? Hand the mic over to whoever wants to start. <laughs> I knew she, was, she was looking at you, so I had a feeling All right. you were the... So this is Jake. I'm actually 23, now 43. <laughs> minus 20 years on that one. Uh, so when did you um, get into music? Like at what age? Uh, as early as I can remember. Yeah? Yeah, as, as really young. I was surrounded by a whole musical family. My oh. dad was musical, my grandfather was musical, so there was always guitars around. I was always not about to touch them. I was oh, like really? 15 years old. I always wanted to play my grandfather's guitar and he never let me play them. Wow. So I remember as young as I could be, I used to sit crisscross applesauce in front of my grandfather. And he would play a lot of Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash covers in front of me. So I was, uh, that's, what, that's what sparked me wanting to play. Now did you have like um, lessons or were you, are you self-taught? I was self-taught for the first three years. Then did your grandfather help you at all? or? No, he won't let me hold the hold his instrument. Wow, even when you were... <laughs> He was like, no, don't touch it. Wow, what kind of guitar was he? He had uh, expensive Martin, he had expensive Yamahas, stuff like that, but he would never let me touch them. Wow. Still to the day. So then um, in school, were you in any kind of um, music and band or anything that they had at school? Uh, no, I was part of a school of rock program. When uh, 2011 I started with that, I was the first Lehigh Valley School of Rock All-Star there. Oh, cool. So and I still work there. Uh, I'm a guitar instructor and assistant music director there. Oh, very good. Uh, Eastman and Allen County. Now, um, what made you decide to get into a band and play out in the gigs? Well, I was always in, in band when I was with the school rock program. You know, I was always doing that kind of stuff. But because I was so young, I was like 17 when I first joined. When I left, I was about 19. The thing about the Valley is a lot of gigs were 21 and over. So, right. Uh, no one really wants to get anybody that young to uh, uh, fight the bar scene. I thought that if you were under 21, as long as you had an adult with you, you could play at the venue. Yeah, that's true, but a lot of people don't want to deal with that anyway. So. Um, <laughs> they're afraid you would... Exactly, they're, they're afraid of that one time, you know? Yeah. So, uh, about, I just joined these guys several August? months ago. Yeah, it was really recent. And that was not even on purpose. I wasn't even looking. Oh. So uh, what happened was the drummer, drummer Tim Nagel, went to Guitar Center looking for a guitarist, and uh, specifically looking for a musician. And it's funny because, shout out to my buddy Floyd Herrera, who used to, who works at Martin Guitar right now. When I was working with him, he was my coworker for Martin, so that's how he knew me, and we used to jam all the time. So Tim Nagel went up to this guy, who happened to be Floyd, and he asked him if he knew any musicians that would like to join the band. And he gave him my name, and here I am. So what did you do at Martin? Where, where I was your... a final polisher. Oh, okay. So I started off in the stringing department, yeah. I was a stringer, and then I went to reinspecting, and then I went into final polish, and uh, Steve Hess was my department manager. Okay, because I know, well, I, I told you I knew Chris um, right. 
Mike Dickinson, he's the one that goes out and buys the wood. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's Mike. downstairs. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, and then their mom used to work there. The whole family kind of right. was there at one time. But, yeah, it's very cool. They let me go in and do, um, like, um, the tours, private tours for right. musicians. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I do. Whatever so you I have to go into the wood workshop and all of that. Oh, yeah, you can go all over yeah. the place. <laughs> well, Chris escorts us. So. Because I don't know everything about the guitar, so she does, right. you know, the talking part. I'm just there, having fun with the musicians, and then we get to go and practice on all the expensive guitars in the studio. Right. <laughs> all right, you can hand the mic over to Stacy, or I don't know. Mike, I have Mike a has a mic. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so Mike, when did you start with your? Like third grade, I started saxophone. Oh, really? Transition to the guitar, senior year of high school, we had no bass player, so I said, okay, I'll learn the bass. <laughs> and that's where I am today, so. Now, did you teach yourself how to learn the bass? No, a combination. I had lessons and a lot of self-talk, too. Now, was that in school that they did? Yeah, all through school. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I took private lessons school, as well. Like, really music do... center, uh, to call it a yeah, I was going to say, when you did any kind of, like, guitars, we always had to go outside of the school for lessons at our yes. school. Yeah, there weren't, you know, I should, there's most of saxophone in school and a series of private lessons over the years. So. Now, do you have anybody in your family that is also into music that helped you get into the music? No, neither. My, my, my mom is a little musical, um, but not not really like Jake. No. Yeah. Yeah, he was, well, I don't know, I was going to say he's lucky, but then yeah. he wasn't allowed not to really touch though, anything. Right? <laughs> So, no, my um, parents supported me a lot. They always bought me instruments. And so stuff. after school, were you in other bands that you played in? How did you? Yeah, a couple other doing? bands over the years, sure. Nobody, and how did you get into Trick Stacy? Uh, I was kind of semi-retired, and I know Lance from a previous band, and he had called me up and just said, "Hey, we're looking for a bass player. Are you interested?" And I thought, "Okay, I'll try it out." And here I am. So, so did they make you um, audition? I yes, I guess you said yes. <laughs> it was kind of an audition. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, do you have a day job? I do, yeah. What do you do during the I work the at Lowe's. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what do you have to do at Lowe's? Well, that's not a music question, so let's move on from that. <laughs> He's a spy. <laughs> He's a spy? Okay, well then we can't talk about that. I'm actually the CEO of the company. I'm their undercover boss style. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we've got to get Stacy back over here. Yeah, so Stacy, let's tell get us. you back over here, please. <laughs> All right, Miss Stacy, how did you start with your singing? Um, I guess I'll give credit to my elementary school music teacher and getting an opportunity to sing in the chorus at Moser. And my first big like breakthrough was in ninth grade at Harrison Morton. I went to school in Allentown. I sang a song called, um, well, it was actually from a show called A Chorus Line. And the show was called A Chorus Line, and I sang a song called Nothing. And it was like a five minute song. I got to sing it for the whole school. And I got to say the word bullshit in front of like 600 middle school kids. It was pretty cool and they all stood up and applauded. So I guess I kind of figured either I cursed really well or I sang really well. So it was, I guess, a combo of both. And then I went on to high school to Deerhoff and I sang in, um, you know, all city choir and um, junior Miss pageant, you know, all that stuff. And then I took lessons from Gloria Davis and um, Joan and Doug Barber, who were both on Broadway. And um, so I studied classically. Graduated from Kutztown University, um, did a lot of plays, Broadway stuff there, and sang for a lot of weddings. And then I wound up being at the stands one night, and Emily's toy box was playing, and they had this like karaoke thing. So I got up and sang, and I did well, and some guy approached me, and uh, he wound up asking me to be in a band that he had going on at that time. Um, his name's Tony. And he said, well, Stacy, you could come sing with us. So he asked myself and my friend, uh, Wendy Mikesell, to go and sing Ah, yes, Wendy Mikesell. In Judge Mikesell. Wendy. And uh, Wendy, it was great working with her in that band. And uh, Tony's actually a lawyer in Bethlehem, so I don't want to mention his last name, that's not appropriate right now, but not that I really care about that, but I will not mention his name. Anyway, he was a really cool dude. And we sang in Judge Mikesell for a while, and then I met Mark through an opportunity on um, Craigslist to go audition for him. They were looking for a lead singer. And I'll never forget singing Dio and some other bizarre, like, uh, awesome Aussie tunes with him. 
And I thought, well, this is interesting, but they like my voice. <laughs> so I enjoyed hanging out with them, and then we became what we are now, Jim Stacy. So you do you any ACDC? This is my favorite band. <laughs> yes. Do you sing ACDC in your We session? do. We have, uh, have Highway to Hell, and I'm limited, they don't let me sing too much. So that, TNT, and also Dirty Deeds, which is my mom Brenda's favorite song. And if it wasn't for my mom and dad, I would not be doing what I do. Yeah. They're my inspiration, especially my mom, she's crazy. They come out to see us all the time, so shout out to Brenda and David Zellner. I'm sure my mom's not listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hi, we mom. post it so she can see it um, on Rock in the Valley or my page mm -hmm. or whatever. So that's kind of a lowdown. He right. really is a spy, just so you know. Okay. He doesn't work for Lowe's. <laughs> well, we are doing a live streaming, so we, we have a comment from, um, I have to, I'm sorry, I have to try to read Superman's handwriting here. Uh, William, uh, Brighton? What? Wild Bill. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. Oh, wild Bill. Oh, Billy Bob. It says, uh, shout out to Steve, Billy Bob. Okay. Ring any bells? Uh, no. That's to you, though. I have no idea. Yeah, Billy Bob. Huh? I have a little Billy Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Like Bob. It. I ain't ever want I don't know. Uh, Billy Bob, explain yourself. And while you're explaining yourself, uh, we're going to listen to four more songs by Trick Stacy. And thank you, Jet Port, for having us here. It's nice to be here tonight. Makes me forget it's only a Tuesday. Let's do a little uh, Jane's Addiction.
listening to this disco ball. I doubt that there's anybody here tonight who used to come here back in the day. When this I did. Place was My sister used to work here. <laughs> this is one smoking club. You're talking uh, late 80s. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. remember, I'm only 23, or what will they say? I don't know. Anyway, I'm 31. At the disco ball, the place was mob. It was craziness. craziness. I remember this place back in the 80s quite well. Yeah. Oh my God. My parents used to bring me here. I was under 21. For dinner, yeah. Well, there was a time when you could, you're 18, you could drink over in Jersey. Yes, well, actually here too at the Castle Gardens, if you remember that place. Mm -hmm. Dating myself again, but girls had to be 18, guys had to be 21. Those were the good old days. I don't remember them well. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. Like the good old days, D-A-Z-E. <laughs> Stacy. The, the goal of tonight is to hear what you guys have to play. But I've been digging around here and I found the recordings from two years ago. Oh my goodness. I don't know the quality of them. I haven't had a chance to preview them. It's up to you and Nancy. All right. 